Our thanks to Mark Immelman of the First Cut Podcast. It's a PGA Tour stop that'll feel like a major this week in Los Angeles and Saturday, Sunday coverage on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Look at this group in the opening round. Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and Tiger Woods teeing it up on a one just after noon local time out there on the West Coast. And with a look ahead to Riviera, here's Michael Breed and Greg Ducharme. Well, the PGA Tour heads to Riviera Country Club in the Genesis uh, Invitational Preview. Michael Breed, Greg Ducharme. Gregory, uh, Riviera is one of those old line golf courses that you just, you love to be on. It always seems to produce a fantastic winner. Max Homa being one, obviously Dustin Johnson, uh, Bubba Watson. The golf course about 7,300 yards, par 71. You got the cuckoo. You got all these little different things that are taking place. When you think about Riviera, we call it Riv. When you think about Riv, what, what do you think? What, like, what comes into your mind about this golf course? A, a, a total test. Yeah. Um, I think that short game is in really high demand here. Uh, the, the fairways and greens are among the hardest to hit on the PGA Tour. I mean, we were talking about this before the show. Max Homa was tied fifth in the year that he won in greens regulation, hitting just over 60% of his greens, right? So it's, it's extremely difficult to hit fairways and greens, and that puts a lot of stress on your wedge play. And what's interesting, you know, I think about Riv, and I think about, obviously, Bel Air and LACC. That's what I think about when it comes to uh, Riviera. And I think about a golf course where it kind of gives you this Open first hole, hey, no big deal. Come to the coast, we'll play a little golf. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's anything but easy um, after that point. I think the greens are generous enough, but it's very difficult to find a fairway. And I love the way uh, the golf course kind of works across the slopes of the hill and you're, you're, you're playing into a, a slope that's working. against it, it has a little feel of Augusta National in the layout, not the property, the, the layout, the way they do it. Not necessarily uh, the grasses, but just the, the, the layout and, and, and the old line feel of it. I, I reflect back to a chip back and shots that he hit when he's playing on a par four, the 12th hole where the property is running to the left and the hole moves to the right. It's just, it just feels like it challenges all facets of the game. Yeah. And it's the, the arguably the most challenging final 17 holes in the game of golf, <laughs> right? Yeah, the best finishing, <laughs> best 17 finishing holes in, in, in golf. But it's also one of those things that tests every part of your game. You're not going to hit a lot of fairways. Um, if you hit, a, uh, you know, the, the ball into the rough, now you've got to do some certain things, chuck that ball up into the air. you got to judge distance properly. To your point, it puts a lot of pressure on short game and obviously putting. So that brings us uh, to this next conversation, which is the atmosphere of this place and Tiger Woods' involvement in it, and now Tiger Woods playing in this. It, it, it's a designated event the second in a row, but it feels like it's a more than designated event because of the presence of, of Tiger. He always uh, enhances the, the presence of any event that he's even at. It, he doesn't even have to be playing. If he's present on the property, he's going to enhance the uh, anticipation. And because he is playing this week, uh, the, the eyes are going to be just that much more um, you know, honed in and focused on what he's doing. Uh, and, and I think that also heightens what happens at the Masters later on. This is now a a warm-up, hopefully not the last warm-up, but definitely a, a warm-up for major championship season. Yeah, it feels like Tiger's going to gonna give himself and all of us a little look at what he can or can't do, and we're going to get a, you know, we've we got to answer some questions here. And I think, you know, as, as I reflect to this and some things that I've written down, fatigue is a big question. What's he going to do? How is he going to get off to the, the start that he wants and maintain it through the course of the, of the week? Can he contend? These are all questions that we ask. And I certainly think that, that one of the big questions that, that I am asking myself is, what do I expect out of Tiger? So before I tell you what I think or what I expect, what do you expect? Well, I, I think there, you're going to see a little bit of a struggle out of Tiger Woods. I mean, since his accident, he's only played four rounds in a tournament one time. Uh, and, and the last two days of that event at the, at the Masters last year didn't quite go so well. So I'm still concerned with his ability to, uh, to complete 72 holes. And, when, and I'm also concerned with his ability here at Riviera. I mean, six of his last 10 starts here have been, uh, uh, rounds here have been over par. Since 2018, he's 11 over par here. Uh, so, and that's before the accident. So I'm, I'm concerned about his game, and I don't think you're going to see him uh, this weekend playing golf. 
So you think he misses the cut. I don't yeah. think he misses the cut. I think he's going to make the cut. I think he's going to probably shoot uh, maybe 71-7, right around, uh, you know, even to one under par. I think he makes the cut. I think one of the things that he comes in this week um, that he might not uh, be prepared for is adrenaline. And I think that adrenaline is going to help him. But to me, it's always the turnaround, to your point. We've seen him play one Sunday round of golf last year in, in the limited events that he played. And so the question to me is, what does the turnaround look like Friday to Saturday? And then what does that do? How does that affect him? I, I Like I said, I think he's going to make the cut, but I think it's going to be a, maybe a T50. Let's quickly go through, through uh, long shots. I like Ricky Fowler this week for a variety of reasons. Talked with Butch Harmon uh, earlier this week about Ricky, and he's really getting it. He's got some confidence. He's got some trust. He's had some great play of late. He's He's, he's made over $2 million this year on the PGA Tour. And if you go back to um, the, the last three years, he hasn't had a year where he's made uh, more than $1.1 million. And now he's over $2 million. He's got three top tens. He, it, 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 it's really, really good for Ricky. And I think he's going to have a great week this week. He's my long shot. Who do you got? Uh, I like Wyndham Clark this week, Michael. He checks all my boxes. Plenty of distance off the tee. He's sixth. Uh, his short game has been phenomenal in the last five events, gaining strokes in all of them. And, um, and his iron play has been right up there with it as well, gaining in four of his last five. Real quickly, I'll let you continue. Who do you like this week? I like Justin Thomas this week. JT. Again, you talk about distance. He has that. You talk about the short game. Uh, Justin Thomas has gained strokes around the green in, in at least two strokes around the green in his last four. Uh, and he's one of the best iron players on the PGA Tour and led the field in his 65 last uh, last week at the WM. Made that switch with uh, back to a putter that he's comfortable with at least the head that he's comfortable with he's been messing around with it a little bit I like that pick I like Rory McIlroy this week I think last week's performance was a one-off I think Rory's going to be right back to where uh, we expect him to be and I think Rory's going to have a great week and he's going to be it's, it's a little bit more common a little bit more comfortable for him and I think he's going to get it done that's our look ahead at the Genesis Invitational all right so Michael going with Rory at plus 850 Greg going with JT at 14 to 1. Now there's been some money on Mad Max. Max Homo opened 20 to 1. He's now down to 18 to 1. Maybe people bought in after watching Scotty Scheffler go back to back last week and Scottsdale saying, hmm, maybe another golfer could go back to back this week. All right, let's bring in Mike McClure of the Early Edge Podcast and Sportsline here. And maybe it's a, a Mike and Michael thing. M Squared, you're also back in Rory McElroy there. Tell us why. Yeah, I'm back in Rory here, and I also have a ticket on JT, so I love the picks from those guys here. But I think this is a great setup for Rory, honestly. I think that you have a lot of what you saw last week in the memory bank. I think you can throw that out a little bit here. This event, even more so than last week, this is a major event for me. This is playing like a major event. You look at the pricing. You look at the daily fantasy. Everything is set up as a major event. That's where I want to back Rory here. Look, we all know the distance off the tee. Definitely going to be in his favor here. I also like the fact that uh, Tiger Woods is in this field. I think that it just brings a lot of positive energy here for Rory. You look at the last 24 rounds of golf. He's the number one golfer in the field. Strokes gain tee to green. Top five in approach and off the tee. And perhaps the most attractive thing for me about Rory McIlroy in this particular setup, he's excellent at avoiding bogeys and difficult conditions. That's what's required to win these kind of golf tournaments. Give me Rory McIlroy. I love where your head's at because people go, Mike, I usually want something in the 20s or 30s or more. But when you have a feel like you have, it's okay to go uh, near chalk or, or at the top there. And by the way, get on Rory soon. Some books are already down to 8-1 to one on Rory McIlroy. Your best bet's going to be a Jason Day play. What's exactly going to be that this week? Yeah, look, I'm very impressed with Jason Day right now. He looks fantastic. He is knocking on the door of a huge, huge win here for him. I'm going to take him in a top 20 market here, plus 175. I love this payout. I think it should be much closer to even money. Uh, I think he's incredibly mispriced here. So looking at the last 24 rounds of golf, I think that's an appropriate sample size for a player like Jason Day, who we know has the skill set when he's comfortable, when he's healthy. When you look at those last 24 rounds of golf, though, he rates third in this field in total strokes gained, fifth tee to green, sixth off the tee, and oh, by the way, he's top 15 in putting. I think this is a fantastic spot for Jason Day. I think the win equity is tough with the big dogs at the top, but I think he's incredibly live here for the top 20 finish. I want to be with you, but my book has plus 130, Mike, if I missed the boat. 
Uh, I think that that's a little closer to the fair price point. I make it plus 118, so there's still a little bit left there. Uh, again, it's one of the biggest edges I have uh, on the entire week. I think Jason Day is definitely, the market is not caught up to the skill set that he has currently okay. in his current form. I may still fire them when we're done. Um, how are you betting Tiger Woods this week? Tiger Woods this week, look, I think that he's ultimately going to sneak in and make the cut. I think that there's basically no shot of contending, no shot of a top 10, anything like that. Uh, however, you have to realize that the Invitational event, it's a lot easier to make the cut in this field. Um, so I, I think he plays okay. He, he, you know, adrenaline takes over, like the guys mentioned. I think that that's going to help a lot here. But I don't think that he's going to threat to finish the top 20. I don't think a top 10 is in the cards. I do think a great result for him would be making the cut. 100 to 1 to win. Uh, there is an odds boost at Caesars plus 550, also straight up 5 to 1 to finish in the top 20. But again, I don't think we want to touch any of that despite being the GOAT that is Tiger Woods. Uh, DFS buys here. Let's go through the good buys first. I'm going to start with Jason Day again. Look, I like him in the top 20 market. Those top 20 plays are typically very correlated with my daily fantasy plays. Uh, look, it's just such a great setup for Jason Day. The price point is fair at $8,400. He rates out as a top 10 golfer in this field and every metric that I care about here. And then the other guy I'm going to look at is Bo Hostler. I think he's incredibly interesting. At $7,200 here, this pricing is like a major. It's easy to fit him in lineups. He's playing fantastic right now. He was seven under through three rounds at the Genesis last year before a 75 uh, really cost him a shot at a top 20 finish. I love the way he's playing right now. He's one of the better putters on tour. He's going to be able to make up anything that he misses with his skills around the greens. Give me Bo Hostler here. Okay. Bo Hostler, shout out. Love that here on Sportsline and CBS Sports HQ. Um, what about a couple of guys for bad buys? For me, it's going to be Tom Kim. And look, I like the guy. He's got a really, really bright future here. However, the price point's a little prohibitive. $8,500 here. This is someone that we have to remember. He was a spectator at this event a couple years ago, right? He hasn't played this event here. There's still a ton of media attention on him. That means that we see increased ownership in Daily Fantasy. I don't think this is the week to deploy him. If he was $7,500, sure, not at $8,500. And then Shane Lowry. I think this is a rough spot for him, honestly. The price point is playable, so a few people will be attracted to it. But looking at the last 24 rounds, Lowry rates just 83rd in strokes gained in this field. And where it gets really bad is around the greens and on the putting greens. It does not crack the top 100 in this field over his last 24 rounds of golf. For me, Shane Lowry is a fade until he shows me otherwise. Emswear, before I let you go, what's your in-game, which, which essentially is round-to-round -round live betting will be at? What are you looking out for after the opening round and then maybe potentially firing uh, in-game into Friday, Saturday, and potentially Sunday? Yeah, so the biggest things that I'll be looking for here is, you know, looking for golfers that make a mistake on a certain hole. There are several golfers on tour that can really let a mistake compound. Um, Roy McIlroy is someone who doesn't typically do that. I, I mentioned earlier his bogey avoidance, I think, is going to be absolutely critical here. So what I'm looking for in certain spots uh, is really live betting hole by hole uh, and looking for bounce back opportunities after bogeys, double bogeys if those occur. Um, and then other than that, uh, just simply group pairings, you know, should Tiger make the cut, definitely going to impact the players that he's playing with uh, in rounds three and four, if he does uh, indeed get through the cut. So those are the things I'll be looking for. I certainly appreciate it, my man. Catch him on the Early Edge podcast on Sportsline. We also want to remind everybody about the First Cut podcast. Of course, uh, we had Mark Immelman narrate that piece for us. We had Greg Ducharme as well, Kyle Porter, Rick Gaiman, all of the fellows. They were out in Scottsdale for the WM Phoenix Open, and now it's on to Riviera. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.